My name is Craig Borum. I'm a writer, director, filmmaker. So Teenage Kicks is a movie about a young guy called Miklos Varga, who's 17 and I'm um, in his final year of school. And he has recently come to the realization that he is in love with his best friend. Right. Um, and he's planning to um, take off after school with his, with his mate, Dan, and they're gonna start a new life up north. But before they can get away, there's a, there's a terrible tragedy in his, in his family and his, his older brother is killed and it's kind of largely Miklos's fault or he, he sees it as his fault. So the story is really about him uh, coming to terms with that guilt and, and his, his feelings for his, new best, his best friend who's, who's suddenly um, found himself a, a new girlfriend. It's very much for me when I was, when I was writing it, it was very much a film about um, the, way, the way people experience grief and the way, especially within a family, you know, in a family tragedy situation, the way people can often be isolated by their grief and, and exist in these little silos of their own pain and, and not talk to each other about what they're going through and, and layering that over the top of a coming of age story. Um, when you're when you're talking about a young character who's who's only really probably experiencing you know big big adult feelings for the first time in in his, in his life in a big way, so so that stuff um, really muddies the waters and and makes that journey all the more difficult. I guess. Um, years ago, I worked for a while in um, in youth work. I, I worked at a, a youth refuge for. Um, um, GL, LGBT kids who were kicked out of home or homeless for whatever reasons and, um, and, and working with them um, I, I saw this real um, overlap in the stories that they were, they, were, they were telling of their own lives and their own experiences there was a lot of similarities in, in the things that they had experienced so I was, I was interested in that, that story that's probably where it started from and then while I was writing the script my, my partner actually lost his brother like his brother died unexpectedly and he, he went through a, a really profound period of grief and that really shaped the way the story was going I was writing it while that was all going on so so it became quite prominent in the story and the story shifted quite a lot there's probably a part of me in all other characters really I think I think whenever you're writing or me whenever I'm writing I tend to draw upon you know my own personal experiences as much as I can when you're trying to find, find the truth of a situation. I mean, the only, the only real way into that sometimes is, is what you've experienced in similar situations. And this, the story is, is definitely a fiction. It's, it's definitely not, not my story, but I, but I know that there's elements of things that I've experienced in it and or, or things that my friends have experienced or stories I've been told that definitely flesh it out. The biggest challenge for us really was, was making you know, a feature film on a, on a micro budget, essentially. So um, we ended up having a much smaller budget than we, than we had always planned to have. So yeah, it was, it was kind of a blessing and a curse. I mean, it did mean that we had to really rethink the way that we were gonna shoot the film and, and um, think about how we could achieve what we wanted on a, on a nothing budget. Which, yeah, which, I don't know, I spent a lot of time with, with cinematographer Bonnie Elliott and production designer Virginia Mercedes and, and we just brainstormed different ways of putting all the money that we did have on the screen so, it, so you know, we, could, we could make the most of what we, what we had. And that really shaped um, not only how the film looked but also the way, we, the way we shot it and the way we worked with the actors and we, we didn't have a lot of lighting setups. We, we tended to light the space if we lit it at all um, before we shot and, and just let the actors have a lot of freedom in the space and, and run the scenes like, like theatre, like they got, to, they got to just perform the scenes and we chased them with the camera, you know, rather than having, because we just didn't have the time in the schedule or, or the money to do huge elaborate setups. And the more we did that, the more we got into a real swing of, of working that way and it, and it became a really freeing, fun way to work. So I, and, you, know, and, you know, I loved it. I really enjoyed working that way, and I'd, I'd probably do it again. <laughs> Locations were really important to us because because we didn't have a lot of money, we couldn't spend a lot of money on production design. So we we wanted to find locations that had a lot of texture and had a lot of beauty, but didn't look necessarily like locations that um, we're familiar with seeing on on screen here. You know, when you, when people shoot in Sydney, so we kind of went out of our way to find 
you know, different different points of view of, of, of the city. And we also wanted, the film is very much about teenagers and, and you know, the, the shortcuts that teenagers take in the worlds that they inhabit. And we wanted to find those places that, you know, that felt true to that. We lucked out with the, the main house that was the, um, the Varga family house was a, um, a deceased estate that we managed to find and it was just empty. So we managed to get the house for the duration of the shoot. So we managed to, we were able to bring all the actors in and actually hang out in the house and have, have this kind of family house happen. And it, it made for a really nice space to rehearse in. And also just, it just let the actors, you know, own the space and own, own their bedrooms and own, you know, the way the family interacted with, with each other. The cast were amazing and, and working with, um, with all of the cast that I, that I kind of wanted, that I wanted to work with, the pe people that I wanted to be in the film were up for it and came on board and, and, and got into it. And that, that made the whole process really easy because they were all great. I mean, they, they were people that I, that I had worked with before or I really respected their work. And, and so it was nice to be able to give them this story and, and let, them, let them run with it and, and flesh it out. So that, that was a blessing. I think if I, um, if I hadn't had such a great cast, that would have been another, another huge challenge, but it's always the way. I mean, the right, the right people seem to always come to these kind of projects, I think. You know. I mean, I always feel like we, the, the, the thing with making films is that it, it takes so long to get to get them up and running and you know you really have to be pretty passionate about the, the story that you're telling so so I, I, for me I feel like I need to be saying something with the film like it needs to be important enough for me to stick with it for a, a number of years you know I, I feel like if I was making something you know fluffy that I didn't really care about I, I would find that difficult to stay with it style wise I mean I think I mean film is film is a is a visual medium, or it's, it's, it's experiential in our, in our senses. So I, I feel like that stuff is really important. I think, I think a lot of, um, especially young filmmakers, forget, forget about aesthetics or forget about you know, using, using all those wonderful things that film has at its disposal to give, to give people an emotional response. So I, you know, I'm really big on how a film looks or how, how it sounds or how, Production design is, is a huge thing for me. Like I think people really neglect that, and it's and it's crazy because it's it's what you see on screen. You can say something visually. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to always be about performance or, or what an actor is saying in dialogue. It can it could just be a, an image that says that says so much. So so yeah, both both style style and substance. I I initially wrote the the feature script. I had just written it as a you know just just because I had the story kicking around inside me and I wanted to get it out. And I, and I did this kind of vomit draft of, of the story. Um, and it sat there for a while, I didn't really do anything with it. And then I had another short film that had traveled really well and I got in, invited to submit a short script to a, to a program in the States. And I didn't have a short script at the time. So I, I pulled out this feature script and looked through it and tried to find something I could adapt and I, and I pulled out a chunk of the second act and, and reworked it so it was sort of a self-contained short story and um, we made that. We made that with the assistance of Screen Australia and that was called Drowning. Um, it had Miles, same lead character, and it had Xavier Samuel playing the Dan character and it travelled really well. It did, did some, um, some good festivals and got a got a nice little audience reaction so we, we got a lot of got a lot of feedback from people who really loved it and and wanted to want to see a bit, see more of the story and like want to see more of the character journey and so I went back to the feature script pulled it out and gave it to Anne Marie my producer who um, she'd never seen it before and she read it and she was like oh yeah this is this is great we we should we should make this so then we took it into Screen New South Wales and um showed them and got some development um, money out of them <clears throat> and we worked with a um, story supervisor from the States, Laurie Webb, who was, um, was fantastic and we spent probably six months reworking the script and, and developing it into what became Teenage Kicks. And the short was really, was really useful, it was a really useful tool for us when we were um, shopping the feature film around. It, you know, we took it to the market in Cairns and 
got got a sales agent on board at that at that point because we had we had a short film that we could show them and it got us our sales agent. The sales agents were on board right way back at script stage and they were really behind the project and that that really helped get investors on board and and get the whole thing moving. Because we had them on, the sales agents, they, they pretty much handled um, distribution internationally. And then local, and then they, de they decided to distribute it locally as well, and then got in partnership with Umbrella, Umbrella Films, and, and they took it on. We did Mardi Gras Film Festival this year, and we did um, Talon Black Nights in Estonia, which is, a, which is an interesting festival with a big market attached to it. And we've done a, um, a bunch of festivals in Europe, not so many in America. I think we've only done a couple in America because the, um, the distributor that picked it up in the States wanted to go straight out with it around Christmas time because it was, you know. Close. Yeah, <laughs> so, so we had a DVD release quite quickly over there, which, um, you know, once, once it's out on DVD, festivals don't really want to run with it too much. But um, that, that's been great. It's been, it's been, yeah, yeah, it's been, Good. Raising funds for for an indie film is it's hard. It's hard work, and we did a we did a really um, big possible campaign, crowdfunding campaign, and that was a lot of effort. And I think I think the biggest advice I'd, I'd give to anyone who is going to do that is really plan it, really really right. think about it, and and don't go into it half assed and, and don't go into it just to see what happens. Like you need yeah. to follow through. Yeah, or if you just think you're going to put it on Facebook and people are going to give you lots of money, <laughs> you know, it's it's a lot it's a lot more work than that, and it's really exhausting and it, and you know it's it's difficult, but worth it. I think I think the biggest advice I'd give to anyone who was trying to make something independently is just hang in there, really. You know, because I think because you know you get you get a lot of hits. And right. yeah. it's it's difficult, but you know I think I think it's it's rolling with those punches. But you know that that's kind of filmmaking at the best of times. You know it's always about compromising and thinking on your feet, really. And you know even when you're in a really good situation, so so hang in there. I mean I, th I think the biggest the biggest words of advice for for young filmmakers is is just just stick at it, keep practicing. And I think I mean the big thing is don't don't be afraid to fuck up. Like I think. I think it, you know, you learn so much from, from making a mess of something and not getting it right, and it really helps with the next thing. You know, you, you take, that, take that experience on and, and get better every time you do it. So I, I think just, just make stuff, just make as much as you can and, and hang in there.